So welcome to a very, very, very special episode of Fashion Friday because today it is Fondo Fashion Friday. What? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are deep deep into the midst of Fondo season. So I thought we should dive into it to make sure you get your Fondo fashion on point. So the way we are going to do this is I'm going to give you my four fashion Fondo tips. But remember the main rule here, guys. We are prioritizing fashion over performance. That is just the way we do things here, all right? My first tip to get your fashion Fondo look on point is prioritize base layers over gilets. Let me explain. This tip potentially does have some performance gain. And the performance gain here is that the base layer really is a much better way of actually controlling your temperature, regulating your temperature than a gilet is. And it's it's often overlooked. Now, the choice of what your base layer is very much comes down to the type of conditions you are. And yes, I am on the Rafa website. Don't worry, it's not just going to be a full Rafa sales pitch. We're going to go through some other brands as we go along. But the Rafa website does have a really good base layer guide and it gives you a good example of the different types of base layers to run depending on the conditions that you have. Now I want to talk specifically about an event coming up here in Australia, the Snowy Classic, and I'm going to be running our team pro team base layer, which will be the one here down the bottom, right? Sported there by one of the Yates brothers. I'm not hundred percent sure which one. I find that with the Gillet, right? that yes, it might sort of be good for that first hour or so, but as soon as you hit that first climb, okay, it's that plasticky material of the gilet. It's designed to keep wind out, right? And you just start sweating up really, really quickly. So you're immediately unzipping it or you're pretty much stowing it in your back pocket for the rest of the day. At some point later in the day, yeah, you might get a little hot in the base layer, but assuming you've got the base layer selection right, then you get to run the look that we talk about on this channel all the time, don't we? The unzipped jersey with the base layer on underneath. You get to bring out the big guns and you bring that look out. As we know, at some point on this Fondo, at some point on this Fondo, there's gonna be the photographer. He'll probably be near the top of the main marquee climb, right? And you gotta get your look right for that because that's the photo, that's the photo that, well, you're gonna potentially print, okay? So this is the look you can shoot for, okay? The nice unzipped, run a few chains if you want. We've talked about that in the past. It's a much better look than just sweating your <clears throat> off in a gilet. So that is the first tip. Prioritize your base layer over a gilet. Which brings us on to my second tip, which is those high vis tradey gilet vest things are completely <laughs> unacceptable. Look, yes, I'm all for a be safe, be seen and all that kind of stuff. But look, the reality here, guys, is that there are plenty of other cyclists around. The organizers of this event had made sure that they, motorists and other people know that there is a cycling event going on. There is no need for you to run that at any point in your existence. Okay, now, now that we have covered that, there's two points that I want to feed on from that because the gilet can potentially still play a role here for you. And I've said prioritize base layers, but that doesn't mean necessarily just ditch the, the gilet completely. The, the second point about this is, yeah, you can get a nice colorful gilet. And we've talked about this one, I think, in the past, the one from Peddler here. They do this nice, um, uh, what are we calling, neon mint colored gilet. I think that's a great, great look but guys here's the thing right here's the thing we see this see this all the time see this all the time the gilet right it's not an afterthought if you're going to run it please don't make it like the gilet that you wore 15 years ago and you haven't pulled it out since and it doesn't match anything that you're wearing it's 24 sizes too big that's a big one that's a big one. You, you want your gilet to be pretty tight fitting. You don't want it flapping about and slopping around the place. It looks crap. And also it's a bit of a performance disadvantage to you. And trust me, if you're gonna be out on the bike for 11, 12, 13 hours, you want all the performance advantages you can potentially get, 
And you've heard me say this in the past. I genuinely think the gilet, especially in our climate, plays a big role. It's it's a it's a piece of kit that you should be investing in to get a decent one because it can cover a lot of bases with you, especially when you run it with the right base layer. So my second tip is ditch the Kogan or the Aldi base layer, please. Get a form-fitting gilet that potentially does match something that you're wearing and run it and get a good one because they're bloody good pieces of kit when you use them right. And that feeds neatly onto my third tip, which is embrace the mid-season collection. This can be a little bit confusing when you jump onto different brands' websites because what they do is they can hide this with some different terminology. Now, I'm going to jump onto the Le Passion website because they've actually just announced it, right? The mid-season collection. Some brands will use, a, you know, like endurance or um, long, you know, that, that kind of phraseology for it. But it's, it's a really valuable style of kit, especially at this time of year for these longer mass participation style events, because that's it's essentially what they're designed for, okay? So let's jump into what their mid-season collection actually is and it looks like. So again, we're in spring, autumn, that type of thing. Now I wanna have a look at, okay, so, this is the jersey that they're calling. It's a merino jersey, and it is going to run. Let's have a look. I, what I want to see is the percentage. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's the percentage. So it's not a full wool jersey. Okay, it's 67%, really nice. It's got the elastay, which is the sort of stretchy lycra-ish fabric. Okay, and there's your polyamide, which is like a polyester type thing. Not super heavy, 160 grams, okay, so probably about 40 or 50 grams heavier than the, the super, super lightweight stuff, but a really valuable kind of weight for these sort of events that we're doing at this type of year. And the other kind of standout features that you'll see from these things is normally they'll have a slightly longer sleeve on them, which is, you know, really good again for that bit more coverage and that the because a lot of these things start early in the morning, don't they? And they're, you know, super cold to start with. And that can be useful, nice and beneficial. And not overly aero, but not full slop spec either, okay? And I think that's what can be really, really useful around this type of thing. The question then comes along is if I run this, should I be ditching the base layer? Well, again, I'd still prioritize the base layer very much in this space, but potentially this is where you can kind of think about leaving the gilet behind because you've got a thicker, you do have a thicker jersey here, which is you know, going to be helpful for those earlier parts of the ride. You do want to make sure that, and look, Rafa, God love them, whatever, but those original Merino jerseys, like they're too heavy, okay? Like they were full, full Merino spec. You, you don't need that. You don't need that. Well, at least not in Australia, you don't, okay? And even if you only have one of these and it's specifically for the event that you do at this time of year, it's really, it's a good way of doing things other than trying to make your flyweight, you know, super lightweight jersey work in a circumstance in 15 degrees, you know, you're battling uphill. So that's my third tip, guys. Embrace the mid-season collections. But before we do our next tip, I want to just give a quick shout to one of our newest partners this year, Flip Insurance. Flip Insurance is a new insurance option. It's an on-demand insurance, and it's designed to be different. Guys, I'm gonna talk a little bit more specifically about this in the upcoming weeks and upcoming months, but I'd love you guys to jump onto the Get Flipped website. I'll put the links down below. A massive shout to them for, well, essentially supporting bike racing in Australia. And my fourth Fondo fashion tip, guys, is look into the option of cargo bibs, but don't do it if you haven't tested them beforehand. So let's jump on to the MAP website because they have an alternate program of a gear. Here we go. And what I want to do is I want to find their cargo bibs, which are these ones here. Now, if you have a quick look, guys, this is perfectly suited for, for really a Fondo, isn't it? Because it's going to give you a couple more pockets, which is exactly what you want on these sort of things. You can take more food with you. More food with you means less stopping. And as we know, we're not, we're not talking about performance necessarily today, are we? But it's 
a better thing to do at a fondo. The other thing here is it looks cooler. It looks cooler because instead of your rear pockets in your jerseys just being s- s- falling over the top with bananas and oranges and gel wrappers and all this kind of stuff, you can streamline that a bit and it doesn't look as absolute slop. You can get like the phone and a few other bits and pieces in the side paneling of the cargo bibs. Now, what I do want to say about the cargo bibs is they tend to come with the option of your side your side um, leg panel ones, and then the pocket in behind the butt. Now the butt pocket, you're not gonna use that because, well, really this one doesn't actually have one. Because you've got a proper cycling jersey on, you won't need access to that rear butt one. But it's definitely a little bit of value with those additional side pockets. Now, I want to say two things. I'm finding this website really annoying. Can I just pull up the actual cargo bibs? So what I just want to quickly say about the bib shorts themselves, you're going to find, no matter what, that there's just going to be a little bit more room for junk in your trunk, okay? It's just the nature of the paneling. It's the way it's built. It's going to have a little bit more space in that. I've mentioned this on the channel in the past. Potentially, maybe look at running a size a little bit lower. But let's talk from a pure fashion perspective okay i genuinely think if you're gonna run the cargo bib fully embrace it and go like okay what have they got a black and an olive go an olive like make it really obvious that you're running the cargo bib that you're fully going that spec all right because everyone's got a black set of bibs that they're you know normally running but this here you go here's a talking piece you're you're in the bunch riding along in your you're about three or four hours in, you're riding next to some bloke you've never seen before in your life. What are you going to talk about? Ah, this dude's wearing cargo bibs. How are they going? And he wouldn't have noticed that if you didn't have something that looked a little bit different. So, okay, whatever. You're all going to have a go at me for jumping back on the Rafa website. But they have they have a men's core range of bib shorts. And I think the cores are awesome. I see no necessarily value in running except that there's only two colorways seemingly um there goes that thought but in terms of just pure um like performance i actually really really rate the normal um bib shorts but do they do a nice colorway are you letting me down rafa no that's no good i hope they i was hoping they do a brown or something like that so anyway there you go in that particular circumstance i was happier with the olive on there But my fourth tip then is very much have a look into the cargo bib shop because it could very well be a super, super option. And if you do, fully embrace it. But what this all boils down to, guys, what this all comes down to is getting that image right when you hit that photographer at the top of that last climb or wherever the main marquee thing is. Prepare for this, all right? Don't just right up to him and then do some stupid wavy type thing you want to be looking this is now when you're riding up to him always act casually deliberate i don't know what that means either someone told me that a few years ago that like in all photo shoots the cyclists always look casually deliberate if you've worked out what that means let me know i don't know what it means but if you do and it dawns on you do that do that before you hit the photographer. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. Obviously, love to hear your fashion tips for the Fondo season coming up, including the Snowy Classic, which is down around Jindabyne. Be awesome. Be back around Jindabyne in the upcoming days. Thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and we will see you super soon.